Hmm. Oh, hi. So it's probably the most enjoyable game mode there is. I'm not talking about 3v3, but GAC in general. And I figured we might as well do a video covering the absolute basics. Let's get into it. All right then, guys. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Just a uh, little bit of a clearing of the throat there. Now, GAC, or Grand Arena Championships, is a game mode that is unlocked once you hit level 85 in Galaxy of Heroes. And um, I'd say it's probably my most enjoyable, my most favorite game mode out of every mode that we have. Conquest is probably coming in at a hot second. So I figured there are probably a lot of newer players that watch my channel. I know a lot of my subscribers are those that are newer to the game. Um, that might need to have a quick overview, a quick explanation of what GAC actually is. Okay, so if we go at a very high level here, guys, a very basic introduction, think of Grand Arena as a miniature series of territory wars. Okay, territory wars, if you're in a guild, you unlock at level 60, I believe, um, and you have a large map where everybody in your guild has to place a set number of defenses, and then... Whatever teams you have left for attack, you will attack the enemy's defenses. Now, in principle, GAC is exactly the same thing, but it is just you going mano a mano against another person within your division. So, I think before we get into stuff like divisions, like leagues, that sort of thing, we'll just take a quick look at a actual map. So, this is going to be my round one. I have attacked my opponent, he hasn't attacked me yet. You will see that on this map, there are four quadrants that we get to set teams on, set up into a basic square. In order to get to the back sections, you have to clear the front sections. Now, the number of teams that you have to place on defense, as you can see here, we've got four out of four here, three out of three over here. In the back, we've got another four out of four here. And up at the top here, we've got a ship territory with two out of two. So the number of teams that you set on defense is dictated by your uh, division, which is, is in turn dictated by your total GP. Now in the top right corner, you can see a number of banners, they call these, and banners will dictate who wins the particular round. The higher your banners, typically the better your score. What are you doing? Hit like now. Do it. Um, so how do we earn banners, guys? Each sector, just like in Territory Wars, whenever you place a defensive team, you will get a certain number of banners. You can see down here, we gain 82 banners for setting a standard squad in 3v3, and for fleet, you gain 100 banners. Now, my opponent set a full defense, which everybody should do. Never try to leave a slot open, thinking you need that team for offense. Fill your defense. Um, so, for filling out this banner in Division 5, I am, but it will also apply to, I believe, up to Division 4 as well, and down to Division 6, um, is going to be 1,102. So based on all the teams he set on defense, that's going to be the base banners. Those are equal throughout all divisions, throughout all leagues, guys. The, um, the number of banners that you get for setting a defense doesn't necessarily change, so long as you fill those squads. I'll say it again, guys. Fill your squads. Don't leave an empty slot down here in the south. It does not work. You will just straight up lose if your opponent attacks. That's Smudgy, he's the GAC Whiskerer. Alrighty, so we've discussed, you know, how do we earn some banners? We've said already that you earn banners by setting your defense. The other way to earn banners, guys, is by attacking your opponent. So if we are to go over here to see the enemy's territory, which I've already cleared, when it's not cleared, it'll look similar to this defense on the left. You'll see character portraits and what have you. But once it's cleared, it'll be grayed out like this. So we can see over here, for offensive wins, we can gain between 16 and 56 banners. Now, 56 in 3v3 is the highest number of banners that you can get for any given win, and those banners are dictated by how well you perform in battle, okay? So, let's go over the scoring scheme. Okay, guys, so just to give you a for instance, I'm going to take a look at one of my older videos uh, of the, the actual GAC battles that I did for this particular opponent, and we'll go over how the banners are awarded for a victory. So let's check it out. I'm about to beat this General Grievous team here with my uh, 
clones 501st team, hashtag spoilers. Um, so we'll see how the points are awarded. Quick sip of coffee. Oh, beautiful. Alrighty, so here we go. 49 banners in that particular um, match. You can see here, these um, lines will each dictate how many banners you get. So because we won the, won the fight, we got 15 banners. That's the base 15. Remember, the lowest you, points you can get is 16. We'll go over how you do that in a second. So 15 banners for a victory. Because we did it on our first attempt, we have gained 30 additional banners. One shotting an opponent's defense, that means you don't have to take a second team in to kill it, will give you 30 bonus banners. Very, very critical if you want to get to the higher leagues. If you want to beat your opponent, try to make sure that you use only one team to take out any given team. The next line over here is surviving units, you can see. We've got three banners there. So for each ally that you have alive, you gain one banner. Yeah, so because we had three clones alive at the end, out of three, we got three bonus banners. At the bottom here, we've got full health units, and that's given us one additional banner. So just before we finish this here, we can see that Echo over here at the top has got no protection and does not have full health. Rex over here has no protection and does not have full health. But Fives over here has got some protection and full health. Now, because we had one unit at full health, we've gained one banner for that. If we had all of these units at full health, that's three total banners. If they also had full protection, we'd gain additional banners for that. Let's do another example. Conversely, if we were to take a look at how to get maximum banners, we'd have to look to one shot with a single character on our team with full health and full protection. So you can see my gas comes in here against remaining Ewoks. We're just going to do an AoE, big hit. They didn't even take a turn, and there we go. 15 banners for the victory, 30 banners for a first attempt. We got one banner for surviving units, but because we have undersized slots, that gives us four banners per character that you drop off. So we didn't use in two players there, so we gained four banners for each of those for a total of eight. And then we had one banner each for full health and full protection. This is the only way to hit 56 banners, guys. I wouldn't personally advocate trying to search for these because unless you go in at a significant advantage or a particular mechanic that lets you gain these solo victories, you, are, you end up risking more than you earn, you end up risking dropping a battle or just scoring poor banners by losing max health and max protection, okay? So only take this in on surefire victories, guys. It is a great way to earn banners, but it's also high risk, high reward. So take the easiest path, really, guys. I'm just trying to explain how you earn these banners. For a second attempt, you will, I believe, only get 10 additional banners instead of that 30. So you drop a total of 20 banners for a second attempt. And if you take three or more attempts, you gain no bonus banners. So really, you want to make sure that you one-shot every single team that you face on defense. Obviously, if you can't one-shot the team, it's better to get the full clear and make sure you clear out all the enemy teams. But try your best to not drop a battle. That's what really costs you banners and end up costing you victories. So, is there any other way for us to gain banners? Yes, yes there is. So as you can see over here, we do have a conquer bonus. Now the conquer bonus, the number of banners that you earn here, is dictated by the number of teams that are in that territory, or if it is a squad or a fleet arena t uh, sector. So we can see up here, there are four characters or four teams that you face in this particular zone, and it gives you 232 banners if you clear all the enemies out and gray out the zone like this. If we take down south, there are only three teams in this instance, and we only gain 204 banners. That's obviously less than the 232 here, simply because there are less teams to kill, so the zone is worth less. Okay, you see a similar thing happen in territory wars with back, back wall zones and front wall zones. Now, over here, there's no difference in back wall and front wall. It's literally dictated by the number of teams. And then fleet is different again. Two fleets in this instance for me, 186 banners for clearing the zone. So, what does that tell you? It tells you that it's very important to clear out as many zones as you possibly can. If you're stuck in a situation whereby you can either choose to clear out the last team in this back wall here, or just one of these teams and not clear out the wall here, you will get more banners for clearing out a zone. So if you do find yourself completely stuck 
and you can't actually clear multiple zones, try to make sure that you can at least clear an entire sector than to cherry pick teams from each section, okay? Now there is one final way for us to earn our banners, and that is to check out the feats. Now each Grand Arena Championship series will have a whole host of feats that you can complete in order to gain additional banners. You can see one here, um, me make 10 men feel like 100, which is a quote from Rogue One. Uh, win a Grand Arena battle using three members of the Rogue One squad. We've got four days and seven hours as of time of this video to unlock that feat, and it will give us a total of 80 banners, but also some championship tokens. We'll be speaking more on them a little bit later in the video. Okay, but you can also see that different feats give you different rewards. Typically speaking, the harder the feat is, the more value it will give you. You can see that this one gives 150 rather than the 80 over here, but it's also a multiple stage one. They don't always have to have these feats relating to Grand Arena. Some of them will be um, feats that you have to do within Grand Arena, and some of them, like this, um, like that make 10 feel like 100, you must win a Grand Arena battle with three Rogue One units. That has to be done in Grand Arena. But down here, that's impossible even for a computer, is win three Fleet Arena battles without using a reinforcement. Pro tip, guys, Malevolence makes that very easy. Um, but moving on. So some feats are required during Grand Arena battles. Some, some feats you can do at any time in any area. And then there's always feats for promotions. These don't award you banners, but what they do award you is gear and crystals. Yes, please. And the more promotions you get all the way up to Kyber, that's the top, uh, top league, the better off you'll be as far as gearing and rewards. Okay, what else can you get from these feats? Sometimes they also give you titles or portraits, okay? So you might get various portraits for completing specific feats. So make sure when you're going into Grand Arena, before you set your defenses, you just go over here, you go into the championship section and you check out the feats in the top right corner. Have a look through, see which one of these feats is feasible for you to do and have that in your mind before setting your defense or when you're playing your dailies. Just try and get them done. So apart from letting you win battles, what else do those banners do? Those banners let you get promoted into different leagues. Now we have different divisions. As I stipulated at the start, your division will be um, based on your total GP, okay? The total maximum GP that you've ever earned. Um, so if you try to unequip mods or stuff like that, you won't necessarily drop into a lower bracket. It'll always know what the highest GP you've ever achieved is. Um, and you can see they range these divisions from division 11, sub 1 million, all the way up to Division 1, which is over 7.8 million. It was recently adjusted, okay? So those divisions will dictate what enemies you'll face. They'll all be in that sort of GP bracket range, 4.5 to 5.14 for my particular division. Um, but they will also dictate how many teams you need to set on defense. I will show that on screen over here. There you go. It's a lot of teams, right? Also, guys, 5v5 and 3v5, 5v5 and 3v3 have got different uh, numbers of teams that you have to set on defense simply because in 3v3 you obviously have more teams that you can set because there are less units overall in any given team. So keep that in mind. Now, what do we have up here? We have leagues. Everybody, each start of each Grand Arena Championship, guys, and each individual uh, championship in total will start in Carbonite League. Now, Carbonite League is the basics that everybody starts in. When you start setting your defenses, you start earning those feats, you start beating teams and clearing zones, you'll be earning those banners. Those banners will all stack up throughout the entirety of the Grand Arena. And you will, once you hit these various thresholds, which again are dictated by your league, uh, by your division, sorry, when you hit these thresholds, you'll get promoted to the next uh, league. Okay? So, if you get promoted within a league during a week in which you've been locked in, we'll get into that in a minute, you won't be necessarily facing other opponents in that league, okay? You'll always be facing whoever you sort of locked in with originally. Similarly with divisions, when you lock in for a Grand Arena Championship, which is a five-week event, 
you will not go up or down a division. You'll never go down a division, but you'll never go up a division from like division six to division five in between the weeks, guys. Your GP might push you over into a new division, but once you are locked into that division for that grand arena, you will stay there until the next one, okay? The leagues are more, um, are more flexible in that each week when you re-sign in, you'll be assessed in, based on which league you're in, okay? So, as you hit these different thresholds and you get promoted, what does that mean exactly? It means a couple of things, guys. First and foremost, we'll talk about rewards. Stands to reason, guys, the higher the league is, which is indicative of you performing better in any given GAC, the better off your rewards are. You can see the rewards in the right-hand side over here. These rewards are granted at the end of the Grand Arena Championship, which I believe is five weeks, four weeks, four weeks of actual battles, but five weeks in total, given the actual wait time, I believe. You can see that it's broken up into multiple sectors. We've got the Carbonite uh, League here, but within that, there's also your rank within the Carbonite League, all dictated by the number of banners that you've earned through feats and through combats, etc. Um, and you can see you get championship tokens over here, you get some credits over here, and you get some titles based on where you place, okay? As you can see, when we go up in the different leagues, you can see those rewards are increasing, are increasing, are increasing. And then you can also get unique titles as well. This is thirsty work. <clears throat> now, one last thing that I will say about the championship rewards as a total, they do not distinguish which division you're in. It doesn't matter what division you're in. What matters is your ultimate rank and your league, okay? So as you can see, if I'm to cycle through the division, different divisions here, we'll go to division one. We can see that the banner count is higher to get there. They have more teams to set on defense, so they gain more banners through attacking and through setting defense. Therefore, they need to earn more banners to hit the higher leagues. It makes sense. But you can see the value of these rewards here does not distinguish between each of these divisions. They are all the same here, guys. These are just the championship rewards at the end, end of the entire cycle, okay? At the end of each week, you will also get another set of rewards. Um, apologies. At the end of each week, you'll get another set of rewards based on your position within your bracket, okay? So once you've signed up and locked in, you will be put into a bracket of eight players like this. You can see me up here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, okay? These eight players will all face off against each other in, uh, well, you basically face three people, yeah? You have three rounds each week. It'll assign you a random enemy out of your bracket. If you win, you will play a random enemy out of another bracket of two. And then if you win that again, you'll go up. It's a knockout style sort of uh, tournament, guys. So you will only face ever three out of these opponents, okay? And you'll, more, more often than not, the harder battle comes at the end because the best players are winning usually. Sometimes you might get matched up with the best player in your bracket in round one. Maybe you win, maybe you, maybe you lose, okay? But you can see rewards here that get awarded at the end of each week. Now, I'm not certain if these rewards changed based on where your division is. I can't really check that right now. But typically, the higher up you place, the better off you are. Um, to get second to fourth, it's usually a case of you won two games and you lost one. Um, and then fifth and seventh, it's, it's worse. But the rewards here are pretty good, guys. They give you rewards, I feel, that help in this game mode. They give you slicing materials and Zeta mats. More Zetas, better mods will help translate to a better performance in Grand Arena. So I'm gonna say it now, slice your damn mods. The next thing that we're gonna discuss, guys, is lock-in, your roster, how does it work? Similar, very similar to Territory Wars. When you click that join button for Territory Wars, there is a countdown there that says, you know, play a lock-in in X amount of hours, okay? And you can leave Territory Wars and rejoin and refresh your roster. So all your current mods will be at that time, um, your, your gear levels will be at that time, your levels, your Zetas, all that good stuff will be locked in at the moment you hit that join button, okay? You cannot, you cannot leave and rejoin Grand Arena like you can Territory Wars, guys. So make sure 
before you hit that join button, which will be um, which will be just here, you can see it's enter now. But when it goes into the uh, the preview phase, when there's a join button there, make sure you check everything. Have you equipped your mods? Do you have the right mods on the right characters? Have you spent those that gear that you were saving up to improve a certain character? Have you put that Zeta on someone? Okay, because in each week, because each uh, championship is separated into four weeks of rounds here, yeah? you can see we've got 26 days here. Each week, you'll refresh your roster. But those three battles in the first week, the second week, third week, and fourth week, your roster will be locked in the moment you hit join. So do not hit join until you are prepared. If you are happy with where your roster is at, with where your mods are at, then that's great, okay? Just hit join, sit back and enjoy the show, okay? So you cannot, when you're going into a battle, when you go into the battle and you think, uh, okay, so I want to take out this uh, Supreme Leader Kylo Ren, but uh, the modding on my characters is not quite right. I'll just go take some mods off a character and put it on my uh, my GL or whatever you're going to use. It doesn't work like that, guys. You can't swap your mods between battles. Your mods are locked in on the characters, and that's to stop people from gaming the system, essentially, and just swapping their best mods to their best teams for each battle. Can't do that. You used to be able to do it. There was a glitch very early on in Grand Arena where you could actually swap your mods after lock-in um, and basically place your best mods in every team. Luckily, they patched that because that was abusable. That was abusable. So keep that in mind, guys. You can't swap your modding. Make sure your mods are on point before you hit the join button. Now, there's one little last thing that I do want to go over, guys, and that is the leaderboards. Now, this is nothing really more so than bragging rights. Going into the leaderboards, seeing how you compare to the different divisions on a global scale or on your ally list or on your guild is just a little bit of fun. Obviously, on the global scale, this will show, you know, how well you compare to everybody else that's fought in this round. Um, um, and it will also dictate, you know, how your rewards are going to be, like we saw before, that reward sector. It was a case of, you know, top 50 will get this, top 1 will get this, top 5 will get this, top 10 will get these various rewards. That's where you can see where you're going to place globally. But if you also took a look at, like, my ranking, for example, it says whatever league you're in, whatever division you're in, and how you place against other people, you can see yourself compared to the rest of your guildmates. How well have they done in their banners? Uh, don't forget, not everybody would have attacked, not everybody would have done the same feats. So these things are going to vary. And then you can also check against your allies. Now, this is just bragging rights, guys. You can see that, hi, it's me, Tom, over here. He's He's got like 200 more banners than me, but he is in a higher division, placing more teams on defense, earns more banners. I'm not salty. I'll catch you, Tom. But anyway, it's just a little bit of fun, guys. It's a little bit of fun. Um, and I see it as a little bit of friendly competition where you can compare yourself to your guildmates and your allies, and you can say, huh, well, I've got 20 more banners than you, and we're in the same division. Come at me, bro. Um... But yeah, just do check it out, guys. It's all a bit, bit of fun. I would love it if you guys would um, if you guys would take to the comment section down below. Let me know how you are getting on with GAC. Do you have any questions about GAC? Let me know in the questions down below, uh, comment section down below. I would love, love to hear it. Um, so yeah, I think that's going to about do it, guys. That's going to about do it. If you want to hear any more on GAC or you want me to go further in detail about it, I'm more than happy to. Come join me on Twitch, guys. Look in the uh, comment section, the description down below. You'll find links to my Twitch, my Twitter, my Discord, all places that you can contact me. Please do so. I would love to hear from you. And of course, until the next video, guys, peace out. Just giving a quick shout out to my patrons. I appreciate each and every single one of you. And without your support, I wouldn't be doing this today. Thanks so much.